What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. We gotta go over baby doge today. Big news today. We just now got our burn. We're gonna be going over that. We're gonna be going over some technicals and I'm gonna be showing you some whales that are making big moves in baby doge. So definitely hit that like button, subscribe. It really helps the YouTube channel out immensely for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also, if you want to join the members for the channel, definitely become a member and I'll go over any crypto that the members want. So I'll be going over those first. And also, if you want these automated trading indicators, definitely check out the Vital Algo link in the description and use the discount code Marcellus for 25% off. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor, none of this financial advice. Let's get straight to the video though. So the first thing I want to talk about here with Baby Doge is the burn. So every single time we get a burn, we are immediately followed by a drop in price. And that's exactly what happened here. And the vital algo indicators pretty much showed us right here that a downtrend was about to happen, right, as it started to happen. So, yes, we went on the downtrend because pretty much we got to burn. Every single time we burn, we go on this downtrend. Now, we're pretty much going to go down to this area here, the supply and demand area of less demand. So, we're probably going to break this support right here. So, this support is the 3260 support. So, the 3260 support is probably about to be broken right here. And we're probably going to end up falling around this area here, pretty much 3250, maybe between 320, somewhere around there. But yeah, we're going to be falling below that area somewhere around there. Now, the next area for us to go, if we continue to go on that downtrend, would be this area here. So we have more demand at this green area, at the 30 area. So we could go down there if we continue to drop from there. But yeah, I'm going to go over the uh, burn really quick, though. I'll keep going over the technicals because there's something actually that I noticed here. And I'll show you very briefly right here before we go over what we have to go over with the whole burning. There's a lot going on with that. So also I mentioned yesterday with the different wallets, like the different movements they were doing. Now it kind of makes sense. So I'm going to be showing that too. But look, we're actually getting rejected here. This is the long terms. So this is a four hour chart here. I've been tracking baby does for a very long time. So you can see all these drawings back here. But what we see here on the four hour chart is a pullback pretty much happening and the pullback happens to two nine so that's what that's what it's showing me these are just technical indicators remember i'm not a financial advisor that is financial advice you got to remember if like we could just start pumping randomly out of nowhere like how we did when bitcoin went to 44k just now it could keep pumping but the technicals show us that we should be pulling back to two nine any moment now inside baby doge and that is not exactly at two nine but it could be anywhere from two nine to two seven or two eight pretty much because it shows like more demand in those areas. And you're seeing these red areas forming around the candlesticks, indicating that there's about to be a drop. Same thing happened here. Red areas forming around the candlesticks, indicating there was about to be a drop. And same thing that happened here. Red areas forming around the candlesticks, indicating that there's about to be a drop. This one was a slight drop, but it happened. And this one looks like an even bigger one. So we could be seeing anything happening. And anyways, I want to go over these uh, burn walls. I'll get back to the technicals, but let's go over the burn. So... This is what happens with the burn. Every single time we always sell out with the burn. But I kind of want to show you the paper trail or as we should say, the crypto trail, because that's pretty much going to clear up everything I said yesterday about the deployer and what they were doing there. Probably doing some marketing or just moving th some things around, preparing for the actual burn. So first things first, they burned four quadrillion baby doge. You can see here three minutes ago, four quadrillion bur baby doge was burned. And it went, whenever you go over here. It says 157 quadrillion now and 184 quadrillion burn. Now, as you can see, it said it does say 157 quadrillion and 184 burnt. And then right here it says 420 quadrillion circulating supply. And you're probably wondering why why is the circulating supply not going down? It's because where they keep taking it from. And that is why I'm gonna be showing you this because last time it came from the deployer, and I think pancake swap liquidity, but I'm gonna show you where it came from now. Because if you do the math, 184 quadrillion minus 157 quadrillion. It's um, actually, I meant to add that <laughs> 184 quadrillion pretty much plus 157. I'm not going to put all the zeros there because it's too much. It only brings you to about 341 quadrillion. So then people are really like, where is the other remaining half? Where is the other 59 quadrillion coins? So that's pretty much what we're going to show here. Now, they that's where they're taking the coins from. Those coins, they're not circulating. So they don't show in the circulating supply because technically they're not circulating. But when you go over here and look at Will Watcher, Will Watcher pretty much considers it as circulating because it's not in the burn wallet. 
So that's why Will Watcher saw this. Now they haven't updated it because they up the next update will be in 16 hours. Then that'll be updated and also 184 quadrillion. But they actually are burning coins. They're just taking it from like different areas. So we're gonna show where they're, where they're taking it. That's gonna be left up to you to decide if you like where it's being where it's coming from or if you dislike it. So let's do this right now. So first things first. Look, this actually came straight from this address here. So we're gonna track this. So the first thing you want to look at here is this. So this wallet here is the Unicrypt wallet. Yes, this is the Unicrypt wallet. So for what happens with Baby Doge, first things first, they take and they send the coins from Unicrypt to the Baby Doge deployer. So they take four quadrillion from the Unicrypt, send it to Baby Doge deployer. This wallet has $261 million in it. This is 18% of all Baby Doge coins. That's 76 right there. Look. This is million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. This wallet has 77 or 76.7 quadrillion of baby doge. This is included in the circulating supply, I believe, because the only thing that's not included in the circulating supply is 59 quadrillion. This is a total of 76 quadrillion. So this wallet is included in the circulating supply when we look at it from the perspective of the tokenomics from the actual track baby doge website. Right, we don't want to look at the whale watcher because they include everything. So this wallet is included inside of both of these. So next place they send it to is boom, the deployer. So the deployer has about 0.28% of all baby doge coins. Now this I don't I don't believe is included inside of the actual uh circulating spot. So over here, look, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, 1.2 quadrillion. They have 1.2 quadrillion inside of this. So that's part pretty much why you see it saying uh, 4 quadrillion here, and then they only sent out 3.4 quadrillion. The reason why they only sent out 3.4 quadrillion, though, is because the next wallet they sent to already had some baby doge. It already had the remaining 600 trillion. So this wallet right here doesn't have as much money. It's only $207,000, a total of 61 trillion coins. So when they sent it to this wallet, then they sent it to directly to the burn wallet because they already had a little bit in here. So all of these wallets that I just showed you are pretty much included inside of the circulating supply so you're like where is it coming from though where is all this money coming from so pretty much this is the question everyone wants to know everyone wants to, one wants to know why is it not showing that we're completely like down so about 154 quadrillion circulating supply let's be honest they're taking it from liquidity that's pretty much the only way to explain it or the easiest way to explain it really but when you look at it 7.8 quadrillion in the pancake swap liquidity. You got over here, OKX exchange, 14 quadrillion. Unicrypt, 76.7 quadrillion. So something isn't adding up here because when you do the math, there is 59 quadrillion coins just out there. So, or I mean, not out there, but 59 quadrillion coins pretty much not circulating. So it's kind of hard. It's kind of difficult to actually like see where this is coming from because when you look at it it just doesn't add up you look at the burn address you follow it you follow everywhere where the coins went so pretty much we're following this crypto trail and we're kind of lost here like we're looking at it and we're like where is all this money coming from so let's go back over here to the uh, previous one we're actually looking at this is the uh, burn wallet and then i actually closed it so i'm probably gonna have to pull it up again so yeah let's just go ahead and go through it again because i just now took it off for some reason but uh anyways look it came at this wallet and then they sent it there boom and then they sent it to the burn address so before that it came from look some of it came from pancake swap liquidity so you can see million billion trillion 643 trillion remember i said the remaining 600 trillion was already inside that account that's because the remaining 600 trillion came from the pancake swap liquidity so you can see like there, there's a lot of movements going on here and you can even see the last time they did it Last time they did it, they took it out of pancake swap liquidity. So million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. That was one quadrillion. Came straight from the liquidity. Same thing for all the other burns. They're taking out of liquidity, the baby dose deployer, and they're pretty much just moving it around it like that. And they're also taking it out from the other one. And I just now closed it again. I don't know why I keep closing it. Let's go over there again. So they also keep taking it from this other wallet. Let me click holders. Boom. Unicrypt token investing. That's pretty much the biggest one that they're pretty much pulling from so when you're seeing that it's not showing that we're going down with circling supply it's because the unit crypto token vesting pretty much some of it is not included in the circulating supply pancake swap liquidity 
not included in the circulating supply, baby dose deployer, not included in the circulating supply. And when you all that add all that up, it's pretty much 59 quadrillion not circulating. And I know when you look at it, it says over here, Unicrypt 76 quadrillion not circulating. But I guess a portion of it is considered circulating because that's the portion that they're pulling out. So I guess that's how it works. But yeah, this is pretty much how it's going. If you want to come here yourself, definitely just go over to BSC scan and then just follow it and do the crypto trail. And then you'll see exactly where all those coins are going. And it's really not fishy. I mean, they're doing the best they can. They can't just burn their own money. They got to go in here and burn the stuff out of liquidity because who wants to throw their money down the drain? Like, even if they are the developers, you can't just expect them to like throw their money away. That's just not how things work like at all. But anyways, this is pretty much what we got going on here. I just wanted to go ahead and follow all this and show you all where this money is coming from. But anyways, moving on from there, now that we went over that, definitely excited that we got this huge burn. That was pretty big. They were kind of late announcing it, but um, they were probably trying to decide whether or not they do the burn or not. But yeah, they did it. They did it. It was 13.6 million. So it was a pretty big burn, but they made a pretty good statement here. And this is something everyone needs to listen to. Please note that burns do not remove tokens from the overall supply. It's still there. So baby doge at $1 would still be 400 quadrillion dollar in, in 420 quadrillion dollars inside of market cap. Baby doge will never reach a dollar unless we switch contracts, unless we migrate to another one. So it'll never reach a dollar because one dollar will always be 400 quadrillion market cap for baby doge because that would be fully diluted now. But obviously, if it went to one dollar, then we wouldn't be looking at fully diluted, we would be looking at the regular. But there's no way it could get to one dollar fully diluted or 420 quadrillion fully diluted because there's not even 420 quadrillion dollars inside of the whole global economy. So that's just irrelevant. Same thing with one cent. One cent is not possible. There is not enough money circulating in the global economy to do 4.2 quadrillion. There's not 4.2 quadrillion dollars in the whole world, like literally. So one cent baby doge out the window. And then we got the 001 baby doge which is also not doable because then you got to think if you really think about, uh, I think that would be about 420. Yeah. It would actually be $420 trillion market cap. It, that's a little bit above. I think the whole global economy is like $300 trillion or something like that. That's a little bit above the whole global economy. So we would have to throw everyone's money inside of the world into baby doge, as well as print an extra hundred trillion dollars just to get to zero, zero, 001. So 2Z1, two zero, two Z not possible. And then you look at 3Z1. Now, 3Z1 pretty much brings us to this area of, um, where would 3Z1 be? 3Z1, would I think that would be 42 trillion or something like that. Yeah, I think 3Z1 would be 42 trillion. 4Z1 would be 4.2 trillion in market cap. And then 5Z1, 420 billion. This is what we're looking at. 420 billion. When I'm saying all this, this is fully diluted. And that fully diluted matters because money has to get in there somehow. So it's like it can't, it doesn't come out of thin air. So 420 billion is possible, but not this year. So 4Z1, or not 4Z1, uh, 5Z1 is not going to happen this year. 4Z1, not going to happen this year. But we can wait until like a year or two years, three years, but 6Z1. That will happen this year. And I definitely believe that. Remember, fully diluted market cap, 6Z1, bringing us all the way up probably into like 42 billion in market cap. That's fully diluted. And that's possible. Like we've seen so many different meme coins. We've seen Dogecoin, Sheep, we get way past that. So I know we could do that. Fully diluted, 6Z1, easy. But the actual market cap would be more around 10, 10 billion. But uh, anyways, moving on from there, I just kind of wanted to tell y'all how that all works. I wish I would have brought the calculator up by doing it, um, doing that, but I was doing it all in my head because I did this math so many times. So I kind of remember it by heart. And uh, just to kind of show you what it would look like, uh, four or 61 really would be, uh, let, let me put this up real quick. So that would be 420 quadrillion circling supply. We're talking about fully diluted because fully diluted matters no matter what you want to say. Million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. And you would multiply it, multiply it by one, two, three, four, five, six, one. That would give you forty-two billion inside of market cap. 
So I, I did this math too many times to have to keep doing it again. So I'm not going to do it for all the other ones, but fully diluted market cap matters. So that's the end of the story pretty much. Because when we look at it, I was I was doing the math before with the whole baby doge and going to the moon. I was pretty much doing this math saying that our circulating supply was going to go down with the auto with the manual burns. But now I'm seeing the way that they're doing it with the liquidity. That's why I'm still talking about this subject because the way that they're doing it, we're not going to go down as fast as we think. Like that circulating supply isn't going to drop as fast as we think because they're taking it from liquidity. They're taking it from the deployer. They're taking it from the Unicrypt. Crypt. They're taking it from all these different areas and it's not directly coming out of the circulating supply. So our circulating supply is going to go down a lot slower than we think because now we're really just depending on auto burns at this point with circulating supply. Yeah, they can keep burning tokens, but they're burning tokens that don't matter. They're burning tokens that matter to the large whales because when those whales, you know, come in here, trade, get in, get out, get in, get out, they need high liquidity to do that. If there's not high liquidity, it's probably going to incentivize them to hold it a little bit longer. So liquidity builds with all the holders buying more and more, selling more and more, more and more tokens getting added to the liquidity. And also when they do these burns, some of those burns go back to the liquidity. You got to think 5% of all of it is going back to liquidity. So that four quadrillion burn they just did, 5% of that liquidity. So I think actually, no, I don't, I don't think that's actually going to liquidity because since they're the developers, they don't have, they can take out the tokenomic tax for the burn specifically. So the burn one didn't go to the liquidity. I had, to, I, I got to clear that up, but still any other transaction, 5% is going to the liquidity. So as they take money out the liquidity, we buy more coins, we sell more coins, more money goes back into the liquidity. So it really doesn't matter. Like they are burning coins, but they're burning coins that we've already burnt. I know it seems kind of fishy, but they're burnt. Not, not that we already burnt, but 5% of our coins that went to the liquidity, they're burning that 5%. So you pretty much see that how that works. And this incentivizes whales to continue to buy and continue to sell because it's like a whole liquidity pool. Like literally, the more people buy and sell, the more liquidity gets added, the more Baby Dose takes and does the manual burn and burns that liquidity that we just added there. So it's like a double burn. It's like a 10% burn, really. And I'm looking at these whales. These whales are making huge moves. This whale, 25.47 trillion. So we're seeing a lot of these whales buying Baby Doge like mad right now. So maybe they sell it because the burns just happened. Maybe they don't. We are seeing a big sell here coming. Um, let me go back to the 15M chart. I'm going to go over the technicals for you all too. But yeah, we are seeing this pullback happening. We knew it was going to happen. It always happens. Literally every single time we have a burn, they always start selling out. Literally. It never fails. But we are having a lot of whales buying as well. So yes, there's a lot of selling, but there's also a lot of buying. But you're always going to see sales like this, $22 trillion. You're always going to see some kind of sale here and there. But yeah, this is pretty much all I want to go over for those whales. But uh, pulling back here, I want to go over the technicals like I said earlier earlier so i expected this pullback to happen as you can see it happened and now that we're pulling back it's kind of looking like it's leveling out here so hmm, maybe we don't go past this, the support but you just got to think about it if we do go down below that support it's going to go to the three zero area and eventually maybe two nine because we also have support at two nine so this is three zero and then you look down right below it two nine so hopefully we do or don't, I don't really care because I continue to buy anyway. And I would also say the best idea, the best strategy is to buy because what if we just pump right now, all the bearish movements are invalidated and we just start the pump and you were trying to wait till the bottom. Like it's not going to work out good for you. So if you're just waiting to get in, it's better to get in now. Now, if you're also just waiting for a dip, that's completely fine. If you already have some baby doge, just kind of sit there, wait for it to dip. If it doesn't, buy more. But um, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this financial advice. You just want to be careful. You don't want to completely be all the way out. You just want one foot in, one foot out, meaning have a, a few hundred billion or whatever you have in there, hundred billion or whatever, and then wait for it to hit that price if you want to buy more. If it doesn't, then you just buy more. But if you have none at all, you definitely want to be in before it takes off because we never know when this stuff is taking off. And like I said, I was going to talk about the long terms as well. So what we see here long term for baby dose, look, I told you a red candlestick was forming. If you watch the uh, previous um, part of the video, you can pretty much see I was saying, like, look, this red candlestick is forming and this is on the long term chart. So this isn't even short term. 
it's pretty much showing us what we're doing long term. So long term for Baby Doge right now, we have these areas of less demand. We have so much less demand that it's going to be very hard for Baby, Baby Doge to get anywhere near 4.3. And even to pass 3.4, it's going to be very hard for Baby Doge to pass 3.4 right now. We would need a huge amount of buying. So this pretty much indicates that in order to get that huge amount of buying, we have to do a pullback. So pretty much what we're going to see here is a pullback to this area here. And this is where our more demand area is. This is where we have that support at 2.9. So you may see Baby Doge pull that back down to 2.9 or 2.8. Now, if we continue to go down below that, then we have even more demand at 2.4. Like I said, these are two significant supports. Like every time I do these technicals, like they they're the supports. It's just where it's at. Um, I can't do any lying on this channel, so I can't say that 2.9 isn't a support that we could reach soon. That 2.4 isn't a support that we could reach if we break 2.9. So I got to tell the truth every single time, but the bulls are still in control of the 24-hour market control by 80%. Now, if we were to scroll all the way out with Baby Doge, if we're to look at this whole thing as a whole, let's take off these indicators real quick. So if we're looking at the whole thing and follow this upward trend here, then we would even push it back even further to about 2-0. But that is like really bearish if we were to do that. But look, if Bitcoin keeps going down, we are going to see that 2-9 coming. We're going to see that 2-4 coming. Quite possibly even a 2-0. If it, if it keeps pumping though, then we're not going to see any of that. And it's just going to keep going. That's why I'm telling you all, none of us can predict the market. None of us at all can predict the market at all let me i'm trying to pull out coin gecko here but yeah actually no wait let me back out but yeah none of us can predict this market none of us know where this is going i can't predict it you can't predict it no one can that's why i say i'm not a financial advisor none of this financial advice we can only speculate by what the charts are pretty much doing and what the charts are doing is showing us that we are primed for a pullback it's pretty much telling us we have more demand at two nine we have less demand at th three four and at three two so what do we have to do in order to get more volume coming in? We got to pull back to where we have more demand. So then that volume has the opportunity to come in. Because just like you all are watching this video saying, hmm, should I buy in or should I not? And then you ask me this question and you're like, do you think it's going to continue to pull back? Everybody else is doing the same thing. They may not be coming directly here and asking like, you think it's going to pull back? But the whales from the retail traders, everybody's thinking, is baby bills about to pull back? And this, this question is circulates in everyone's mind. So it's a psychological thing. They're like, no, it's definitely going to pull back. So then now no one wants to buy, not even the whales. They're like, nah, it's going to pull back. We're not going to just continue to dump all our money. Some people are buying, but most now they're waiting for it to pull back because that's what they see happening very soon. So I definitely believe a pullback is still going to happen. Now, if it doesn't, I'm definitely going to be happy. But that's what the technicals are telling us. They're telling us that everything's going to continue to pull back even Bitcoin. So yes, this could still be a bear trap or a bull trap. I mean, so just prepare for what could happen. I mean, looking at how Bitcoin's been trading recently, it, it definitely looks like it could be a, a bull trap. So let me just kind of pull back here. Actually, let's just bring up Bitcoin directly. Let's do this right now. Let's do this right now. We're just going to bring up Bitcoin. I know the video is getting long. So if you don't want to watch a long video, you can click off now. But if you want to get the whole full scope, I'm going to go over here and show you the long terms for Bitcoin, because when you look at it from that perspective, what Bitcoin is primed to do for the long term, that gives you a better you know, idea of what is going to happen. Literally, the vital algo indicators, these technical indicators that go off of algorithms and go off of charts is telling us that we're about to get a reversal. And it's literally telling us this when it says chance of reversal, that chance is pretty much a 90 percent chance. So there's a 90 percent chance that Bitcoin pulls back all the way down to the four zero area because that's where we have more demand. But that green area is so lightly shaded, meaning that it's not really a good area of support. There's not really much demand. We're coming off of an overbought area. What happens after our overbought area? You get oversold. Every single time this happens, we always get some selling. Literally overbought, go straight into a bearish downtrend. You can see here on the oscillators. Overbought, goes straight into a bearish downtrend, finally becomes bullish, but then it becomes oversold. Same thing over here. We had so much overbuying, boom, straight into an overselling area. So what do we just now have? We have all this overbuying. We're going to have to see an overselling. Baby Doge is going to go down with it. Everything is going to go down. 
Only way Baby Doge goes up while this goes down is if we get the big news, if we get some kind of listing, if we get our utilities, or if people are just talking about Baby Doge so much that it starts trending like we did before, like December, January. So that could happen. Now, like I was saying here, this whole area here, very lightly shaded green area. So even if we do hit 4.0, we're going to very briefly bounce back up to 4.2 before we go down to about 3.7 through 3.6. There's not enough demand in 3.7 through 3.6. So you're probably going to see the same thing happen. Try to go back up 3.7, get rejected because there's just not enough demand to keep that volume increasing and keep the market cap increasing. So then it pulls down. Boom. It goes that back down to 33K. Huge demand at 33K. This whole area is like very green, which is showing that there's lots of demand there, like way more demand. And then from there, we don't really see anything else because that's all it's going to show us. Because that's all that matters. So it's pretty much saying 3.3 three is pretty much the bottom. And if it even breaks 3.3, three, we still have this huge green shaded area. So 2.8 being the complete very bottom. Well, really 30K, not even 2.8. So 30K being the complete bottom. But 33,000 being the more probable one to stop at. 34 to 33. But if we keep going down for some reason... 30,000 is pretty much what they're saying is going to be the lowest here with Bitcoin. And look, when Vital Algo tells you there's a chance of reversal, there's always a reversal. So you can see over here, we came to the bottom. It was like, look, we're not about to be bearish anymore. Chance of reversal. Boom. Go on an uptrend. So it tells you it's about to be a strong downtrend. So we have that strong downtrend. Boom. And it shows you there's about to be a chance of reversal. But what happens? We go back on the uptrend. Boom. And then it shows you over here, chance of reversal. And now it's showing red candlesticks around the green. So, yes, we're about to see 41K coming in. So, yeah, just prepare for it. Um, I Like I tell you all, I go off of the indicators. I don't really go off of what people say. I go off what the technical charts are telling us. And then I look at the news and then I compare it. And the news is really bad right now. Russia and Ukraine, terrible. Inflation, terrible. And so much other stuff, terrible. So it's really hard for us to you know, say that this is going to be bullish and say that this is not a bull trap because everything that's going on. But yeah, I just wanted to go over Bitcoin as well, because I know a lot of people in Baby Doge are, are kind of tired of me going over Baby Doge charts and look, they're like, look, it doesn't matter. Only news matters for Baby Doge. Kind of true. But the only thing that matters more than news for Baby Doge is Bitcoin. So when I'm following those charts on Baby Doge, I'm really following Bitcoin because Baby Doge's price is following Bitcoin when no big news is coming out. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. But this is pretty much all I got for you all today. And uh, if you all like the longer videos, definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the longer videos. I'm going to do them anyways, even if you do or not, even if you do or don't like them, I'm going to do them because I provide value in every single one of my videos. But I'll always make sure to make shorter videos for other people too. Like if you watch my previous, I think, three or so videos, maybe three videos back, you see it was only 11 minutes. I got straight to the point, went over technicals, went over what whales were doing, went over the little bit of news that we had. So I went over it very briefly, 11 minutes, some of them 10 minutes previously in like the past five days or so. So I'm always going to be doing both. I'll do long videos for the people that like the long ones and short videos for people that like the short ones. But yeah, definitely hit the like button, subscribe. It really helps the YouTube channel out immensely for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Definitely join, join the memberships for the channel. It really helps the channel out a lot. And I'll also be going over any coin that you want me to go over. But I will be giving my honest opinion on them. So if they're a scam, I'll say they're a scam. If they're not, I'll say that they're not. But yeah, it's just my opinion. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. Now that's financial advice. If you want these vital algo indicators, though, they really help out a lot. Definitely check out the vital algo link in the description. And use the discount code Marcellus for 25% off. And as always, I'll be back with another video. Peace.